Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video I want to address depth of field. So this is a lesson in depth of field. Welcome to the video. Um, I'm just going to briefly discuss depth of field and we've got a plain example here to help you, guide you how depth of field works. So essentially, I've set up these four Star Trek models. You might be familiar with them, but basically we've got a Nebula class starship here. We've got um, a Voyager class, Intrepid class ship here. We've got um, a Vulture class cruiser and a Bird of Prey Klingon ships. So obviously you might notice I'm a bit of a fan of in Star Trek, but I thought I'd give you an example, visual example of depth of field. So we're about a meter away from uh, the first starship and we're focused on, on this one here, about here. Now I want to describe depth of field how it works. <laughs> Briefly put, depth of field it refers to what's in the foreground, which is in front of you, and what's in the background, and how much of that is in focus and out of focus. So generally speaking, <clears throat> if I'm focused on this ship here, um, the first disruptor bit of the cannon here should be out of focus, and hopefully this ship and that ship, because we want to isolate this ship uh, and focus on that ship but um depth of field if we play around with the apertures we can bring these other ships into focus or at least more into focus so this video is all about showing you depth of field how it applies so i've got an overview picture here for you to see where the ships are positioned so let's go to the first image so the first image is that nebula starship here and we're focused on the deflector array there um, and as you can see this is aperture f 2.8 this is a full frame EOS R camera that we're using and the ISO is at 1000 so it's quite relatively low ISO because it's a full frame camera it, it can cope with very high ISOs so I just want to show you the differences between the apertures what it brings into focus so as I've said um, this disruptor cannon here on this Klingon ship is actually in front of uh, this uh, deflector array here. If we go back to our overview picture here, as you can see, it's quite a significant, significant distance in front. So we go back to our first image here. So this is aperture 2.8. This is typically what most people want to isolate your subject matter. And it gives you an idea of what it does uh, and what it's out of focus, basically. It, the focus plane is pretty much there um, there um, obviously that's in front of the focus plane so let's just have a look at f4 see how that compares obviously there's a little bit of difference but this this is the the thing everyone thinks 2.8 is fantastic and great and much better than f4 it's only a tiny bit better you know let's just go back to that first image um, 2.8 f4 very minor difference so let's have a look at f5.6, see if that brings that disrupted cannon into focus at all. Um, so let's just have a look. It brings it a tiny bit into focus, but not much. As you can see, in the nacelles have sort of got a lot more into focus here. And we're seeing more of, of the ship as well, because this part is in front of the deflector array. But that's f5.6. Let's just have a look at f8. And obviously it brings a lot more into focus, but obviously we're still not getting that disrupt disruptor cannon into focus. But the majority of that ship is in focus and we've brought some of this Voyager class cruiser into focus. Obviously that intrepid uh, Voyager class starship is still out of focus anyway. So we need to move, make the iris even smaller to try and get more in focus. Believe it or not though, you can't actually tell what's in and out of focus in terms of depth of field through the viewfinder on a mirrorless camera. So. Um, it's not as fantastic as everyone makes out. The only thing it is beneficial is you can actually see exposure in real time. So obviously let's have a look at F16, see what that does. So F16 we pretty much brought the disruptor cannon into focus. Literally all of the Nebula class starship is in focus and the majority of the Klingon Vulture crews are in focus. And we've got more of the Intrepid uh, Voyager ship into focus 
but that gives you an idea of what what's happening regarding depth of field so we can go even further and um, we could eventually go up to f32 but the thing is the more you close the iris down the more risk you've got of bringing something called dis diffraction into your picture and basically that's the, s the softening of the image so it's always advisable not to go down too much but just for the sake of it let's have a look at f22 and see what that does um, there's a minor amount of difference with the disruptor cannon here more of the uh, um, Voxy class cruiser is in focus and it's brought more of the actual intrepid um, ship into focus so let's go back all the way to f2028 um, f sorry f2.8 and let's just have a look how that looks so just quickly um, 2.8 F4, 5.6, F8, F16, finally F22. Very minor differences at each step. Um, I think the main um, amount of focus you're gaining, um, that's a dramatic difference, would be um, between F um, 8 and F16 I think that's your main differences really um, it's a big step from F8 to F16 so I just wanted to give you a, a quick visual aid referring to depth of field how it works obviously that's F22 and then uh, that's our top picture to tell you where the ships are in, in relation to the focus so I hope this video was a bit helpful I'll show you the examples now in uh, in a music based video but I hope this video helped you out in figuring out depth of field ultimately just remember that um, depth of field refers to what's in front of your main subject matter and what's behind it the amount of focus that you're getting um, so you know this is really applicable for landscapes really because you want as much of the landscape in focus as possible so typically most people stick to F8 and F16 um, for landscapes but I just want to give you a visual demonstration on depth of field how it applies and hopefully this video was informative and thanks for watching mm -hmm.